Alright dudes, so I've been reading a lot of troubling things in the news lately and I can't not talk about it anymore. Uh, apparently there's a measles outbreak in New York and uh, I think it's time we have a little talk about vaccines. That's so science! So vaccines are responsible for ridding the world of some of the worst diseases known to man. We're talking smallpox, rubella, measles, mumps, polio. So before I get into the nitty gritty sciencey details of vaccines, let's talk about herd immunity for a second. Vaccines are only effective when the vast majority of a population is vaccinated. So this protects the most vulnerable members of society, those who are immunocompromised, the very young, the very old, those who can't be vaccinated for whatever reason. You can think of those who are vaccinated as a kind of firewall. They stop the spread of contagious diseases. But there's a map to this protection. It's called the herd immunity threshold. And the more virulent or more contagious the disease is, the higher this threshold has to be. So this is the reason why we want the vast majority of people, well, anybody who can really, to be vaccinated. Vaccines aren't a new thing. They've been around for centuries. Back in 1022 AD, it was discovered that those who had survived smallpox would not get it again, no matter how much contact they had with a sick person. So the idea arose to deliberately infect healthy people with a little bit of smallpox. And this usually happened by crushing up a dried scab from somebody who had smallpox and um, taking that powder and putting it into a small scrape or cut on somebody's forearm. So this early form of vaccine is called variolation and it proved to be incredibly effective. Those who hadn't had the treatment, their possibility of dying from smallpox is up to 30%, but the death rate after people had been variolated was only 3%. And then something amazing happened in May 1796. It was discovered that milkmaids who had gotten cowpox would not then develop smallpox. So rather than using actual smallpox scabs, they used the much less virulent and much less deadly version of the virus known as cowpox. And this is actually where we get the term vaccine. It comes from the Latin name of cowpox. So today we know this response is the result of our immune system and antibodies. Antibodies are the key, you no, know, the lock to our immune system. Is that the right metaphor? We're going with. So today vaccines contain a killed version of a virus or attenuated version, which means it can't reproduce. The goal is to produce immunological memory. Um, your body needs to know what a virus looks like or what a key looks like so it can create a lock. You can think of pathogens, which are diseases, viruses, etc., as a kind of ball covered in spikes, and these spikes are called antigens, and antigens are the key. These keys are trying to figure out a way to break into your body's cells. There are antigen-presenting cells roaming around in your body, and they are looking for invaders. And when they find an invader, they gobble it up and take those antigens from the invader and display it on the surface of their cell. This way, it's kind of an alarm call to other cells saying, hey, we got an invader, we need backup. This backup are your lymphocytes, which are your white blood cells. The two types of white blood cells that are important here are T cells and B cells. B cells are the factory of antibodies. These antibodies become a lock for a specific key of an antigen. By locking an antigen, they can either stop it from invading a cell, or they can mark that antigen and pathogen for destruction. These B cells divide and produce daughter cells, and the goal of these cells is to fight off any future infections of that pathogen. The other white blood cell here that's important are T cells. There are helper T cells, and these activate other lymphocytes, and then there are killer T cells. If a virus enters one of your body's cells, the killer T cell comes in and destroys that cell to stop it from spreading throughout your body. There are literally millions of different lymphocytes in your body right now that recognize different types of invaders. When your cells create a lock for a specific invader, the next time it encounters that invader, it reacts much stronger and much quicker than it would have if it had never encountered it before. And this is where the effectiveness of vaccines come from. This quick and strong response is called a secondary response. Vaccines allow your body to prepare itself for that invader in the future. That way it can kind of build up an armory against that invader and kind of push it back, kick it out before it can cause any real damage. So this is why we want to vaccinate everybody as possible to allow your body to create its own defenses. And um, so you should vaccinate your kids because it doesn't cause us autism. And, yeah.
that's a whole different video and I don't want to get into that right now. But please just vaccinate your kids. They're good. They protect people from smallpox and polio, which are awful diseases that are still on this planet. They haven't gone away. They haven't disappeared. They're still there and still very much a threat. And if we allow our population to get below that herd immunity threshold, we get into some very dangerous territory. So please, vaccinate yourselves, vaccinate your kids. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can find me on other places on the internet, such as Tumblr and Twitter. Check out those links in the description below.